All right, Ray Ushkubo, you're mm -hmm. 13 years old. What can you possibly teach me? Well, I could teach you about uh, practicing, how to go over practicing, which would be discipline. <laughs> All right, we are here, Pittsfield, Vermont. It's still raining. I interviewed Ray Yushikabu. Did I get that right? Pretty, Pretty close. close. And we're gonna talk about him with Colonel Nye, Seth Can't on wait. my left, Dr. Johnny, Marion on the camera. This was a tough one for me. This was really difficult. This was uh, like no other kid I've ever encountered. 13 years old. 13 years old, a prodigy. Let's watch it. We are back in LA with Ray Yushikabu. Is that right? Yeah. Child prodigy, 13 years old, pianist, violinist, and artist. A little bit of artist. A little bit of artist. Yeah. And so how'd you learn to play the piano or the violin? Well, I just started playing, and well, the reason I started playing was actually I saw a, this Japanese television drama called No Dame Cantabile, and the hero of the drama was a professional conductor, and also a very great pianist and violinist, and he really inspired me a lot. I mean, obviously, a handsome actor was portraying him, and he had a really cool character, and he really inspired me, and I really thought I wanted to be like him, so that's how I started. And so you see this show yeah. while you were in, living in the U.S.? Or? Yeah, I, I was born here. You were born here. Yeah. And you're, you see the show, and then you found the violin somewhere? Or? Well, I, well, first of all, I, I asked my parents if I could start the piano, and we already had a piano, so they said okay, and I started playing. They, they, pl they play the piano, parents? No, 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 they don't. My dad uh, wanted to play the piano, so he bought it, but he gave up in like three months. <laughs> you broke him? Well, no. <laughs> and then I asked my parents if I could start the violin, and this time they said no, because we didn't have a violin in our house. Right. And I begged them, I said, please, 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 I really want to play the violin, and well, they accepted it. It, and they bought me a $20 violin. Wow. And that's how I started it. And it worked? Yeah, yeah. And that was at five? Uh, well, the violin at six. At six. Yeah. So you already had been playing the piano for a year? Yeah. At that point? Yeah. And did you, when you got on the piano, it just started happening right away? No one showed you anything? It just worked? Well, I, I started uh, reading some music, and then I got a teacher, and that's how I got uh, developed my piano skills. And they knew right away? The teacher said, wow, this this." guy is pretty good? Well, <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> and now, how much do you practice a day? How many hours a day? Uh, three hours piano, three hours violin, and three hours doing homework. So nine hours, and then you sleep how many hours? Um, I, I try to sleep uh, at least eight hours. At least eight, so that's 17 hours. You have seven hours left. What do you do then? Um, what do I do? You got to like, eat. Yeah, I got to eat. about an hour, so yeah. you got six hours left. Eat, study... Um, well, I sorry. Um, you don't play at all. You don't have time. Well, to play. I, I do play. I when I eat, I sometimes watch a movie. I, I love watching nineteen uh, eighties, nineties action films. Like what? Like Bruce Willis stuff? Yeah, Die Hard and Terminator Three. Terminator. Yeah. yeah. So you still have five hours left that you might be wasting. <laughs> <laughs> well, not exactly wasting, but is uh, in Just high put, school. Yeah. Puttering around. What grade are you in? I'm in ninth grade. You're in ninth grade. Yeah. How are you doing in school? Pretty good, I think. Yeah? yeah? Like A's? Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. I, I, I can't bear if I get any B's or something. Can't bear it? Yeah. What do you do? I, I try, I Smash ask Smash the violin or? <laughs> no, just work harder. Work harder? Yeah. That's good. And what school are you in? Um, I'm actually, I go to Summit View Independent School. I go to the school once a week so that the other days I have time to practice. Oh, you only go to school once a week? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, all right, so wait, you go to school once a week, and so on the other days, you, you do, that's when you do the six hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Well, I go to music school, to the Cobra Academy, Music of Academy. Got it. Yeah, and I go there about three times a week. Do you wake up and just tired and say, I don't feel like playing the piano today? Huh? Do you wake up and say, I don't feel like playing the piano today? Well, yeah, well, no. Well, I generally, practicing is in such a fun thing to do, but, um, well, I know that in order to become gr better, that I have to practice, so I just keep my discipline. <laughs> but there's, there's never days where you just say, I'm just, I don't feel like doing it? 
Well, I I feel that many times, but I I never I never skipped any. I never skipped. You don't skip a day. Yeah. Seven days a week. Well, most of most of the time, but sometimes I go outside, go to Disneyland or some things yeah. like that. Yeah. You go outside once once yeah, a month. Yeah. Otherwise, you're inside just playing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sorry. just busting your chops. I'm having fun because I love the intensity. Yeah. It's like a wrestler or anybody that wants to be great at something. Mm-hmm. They have to do it all day, every yeah, day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Have you read uh, Malcolm Gladwell's book uh, where he states, no. if you get a chance, uh, read his book. Yeah. Uh, you have plenty of time. Um, <laughs> 10,000 hours mm-hmm. is what he argues is required to be an expert at something, uh-huh. whether you're a programmer or playing ice hockey oh, or yeah. piano. Mm-hmm. And so if you've been doing six hours a day for eight years? Um, for, yeah, eight years. So what is that, 1,800 hours? Uh, it's about yeah. 1,800 hours a week, uh, a year, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, it, yeah, you're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> you're almost there. Well, so Or you're I, over that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what would you recommend uh, other 13-year-old kids do? To well, um, to be as successful as you are, um, practice, study, <laughs> and just work hard. Yeah, but you can't just work hard. If you just work hard, then you get like kind of cr- cramped. You know, you just, you have to go some. You have to have some fun. A little bit of fun. Yeah, yeah, of course. Disneyland. Yeah. Well, yeah. How often do you go? Um, how often do I go to Disneyland? Huh. In particular, um. I don't know, less than once a year. So what are other fun, fun things that you do? Um, well, when I rest during piano practice uh, or violin practice, I, I research cars. I, I, I'm crazy about cars. Really? Yeah, I like uh, Mercedes-Benz, actually. You like those are good ones? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what model? Um, my dream car is the SLS AMG mm. Coupe, yeah. And um, you're going to get one someday? I want to. <laughs> Just hard work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, what do you think drives you? Just Is it the car? Is it, is it um, being the best? What is it? Um, well, uh, well, actually, when I perform in front of the audience, it, it has a great joy. I mean, after I play in front of the audience, the audience becomes happy after listening to my music. And when they say, great job or wonderful to me, they then that makes me happy, so that's how I am able to... It's like a to... feedback loop, and then yeah. you want to do it again. Yeah. What's the biggest audience you ever played in front of? Um, probably one of them would be at the Rene and Henry Sederstrom Concert Hall. I was invited by this uh, world-famous, renowned uh, pianist, Lon Long. He is one of my favorite, pia- favorite pianists, too. He actually emailed me all of a sudden one day, and... He invited me to perform at his concert, and I was really surprised and excited. And well, yeah, it was a fairly large audience. Audience thousands. And, yeah, a couple, two thousand more than two thousand. Oh wow! Yeah. And are there other kids your age that are um, as good as you? And, and well, yeah, there are a lot of good lot kids. Of, you've got some competition. <laughs> well, sort of. Yeah, sort of. Let's take a break, and then we'll come back, and maybe yeah. we'll maybe yeah. you and I'll go find the piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is Joe D.I. with today's fitness tip. Did you know spending one hour a day barefoot, walking around or standing can be better than one hour a day of stretching? The body is nothing but a joint on top of a joint on top of a joint. And when the first joint of the body is constricted or immobilized by tight shoes or dress shoes, it impacts every joint above it, which causes muscle tightness. So spend more time barefoot and less time stretching. Aru. We're back. And um, as you heard, our producer has very specific things she likes me to go over sometimes. She wants to find out why, if you enjoy the uh, TV shows, the 1980s TV shows like Die Hard, Hmm. why didn't you go that route? Why didn't you try to emulate Bruce Willis rather than the pianist? Well, probably because when I saw a Japanese drama, I was just five years old. And so I I thought I could just do it and, and instantly maybe. But well, when I it would have been harder to like convince your parents to get a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, plus when I was when I got interested into Terminator Die Hard stuff, I was pretty old enough. I was like, it was like t- last year when I was like twelve, so I, I was old enough to know that that's a dangerous thing to do. That'd be dangerous. Yeah. So you're five. 
mm-hmm. and you see this show, and yeah. you get excited and you want to do it, is that you think because there were no limits at five years old in your mind? You can do anything? You could be an astronaut? Yeah. You can do anything? Well, I, I don't know how, I, I don't remember how I felt at that time. I, I just remember that I was really inspired by him, and um, I started practicing, and then, well, obviously in the drama, it, the hero tells the audience that you have to practice a lot in order to become better. So I practiced, and that's how I, yeah, started piano. It doesn't happen with everybody. You know, there's 7 billion people on Earth. A lot of people, that's the problem. They don't want to put in the time and practice. Yeah, well, my teacher and, of course, my parents um, told me that I should practice in order to become better, and, well, I agreed with them, and that's how I, yeah. That's how you did it? Yeah, I kept on doing it. And were you scared when you went on stage? You described going on stage earlier. Well, was I scared? Um, Many people ask that question, and many people say they get scared or nervous when they go on stage, but I never actually got nervous when I performed. Um, Somehow, when I perform, I'm just concentrated into the music, I just forget about being nervous or anything. You just have fun. Yeah, and actually, I never get nervous performing, but I get nervous when I talk, so like right now, I'm a little, little nervous. nervous right now. <laughs> yeah. How about doing a, a Spartan race? Would that make you nervous? Well, right now, I've never done it yet, so... Maybe a little? Yeah, especially if I'm doing it in front of a person or something. Do you want to do one? Well, maybe if I can, yeah. Let's try one tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> sure. We, uh, tomorrow we have one, if you're up for it. I mean, oh. listen, it'll help you um, take your career even to the next level, Spartan Race. <laughs> there is not one great pianist in the world that has not done a Spartan Race before. <laughs> <laughs> you got to try it. Yeah. Would you be open for it? Yeah, well, I might, yeah. You might, right? Yeah. You, the thing is, you can't be too wishy-washy, because it's like 7 or 12 hours from now. We got <laughs> We got to get you out there. Yeah. Do you think your parents would say okay? Well, this week I have a lot of I have op- a lot of opportunities to perform, so I'm kind of pretty busy. Tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Well, tomorrow and this whole month. I, a lot of people say to me, "I'm pretty much busy forever." And then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I guess you're not going to be doing a Spartan race anytime soon. Well, not soon, but yeah, maybe soon. What's your favorite exercise? Do you exercise? Yeah, I like I like sports. Yeah. What What's your favorite? I so um every summer. Well, not recently, but every summer I go to a lake and I do a wakeboarding. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it's pretty good exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you're looking out your window. You're seeing your friends play soccer mm-hmm. or baseball. Are you wishing you were doing that, or are you saying, oh, they're wasting their time? They should be. <laughs> well, I don't. I never thought they were wasting their time. I I've I've played soccer with my friends when I was in um, when I was a little too, and well, but the thing is, um, I enjoy playing music more than playing baseball or just hanging around. So, yeah, well, they're not they're definitely not wasting their time. No, but, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You found your passion and you're getting it done. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you. Good stuff. Ray, you know what? I will give it to this kid a thousand times over. He has something that I haven't quite found yet, like commitment and dedication to one or two things. I mean, that to me right there is heroic. Kid, the kid gets it done, no doubt about it. Um, <laughs> difficult for me to interview. Um, he was. He was. Why he was. It's so difficult. Uh, well, I'm just not. I haven't encountered that before. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a different energy, right? Like yeah. you're, you're used to these very engaged, dynamic people. And this kid, he's, he's 13 for starters. But I loved when he talked about. He, he said, "I'm really nervous. I don't like speaking." But you said, "How do you deal with being nervous on stage?" You went, I'm not nervous on stage. Right. I talk about a 13 year old who gets up and plays in front of thousands of people with one of the best in the world who invites him out and isn't nervous. That's pretty incredible. Like that's that's almost transcendent. How old was Winter Vinecki? I mean, to bring that Winter, to another but, but, youth. But I was able to connect with Winter because she's an running, okay. she's doing, right? I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a concert pianist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand that. But, yeah. but man, the commitment, the dedication, the, the willingness to just Six stay focused, day. amazing. Never take a day off. Yeah. And, and that was neat when you asked him about that. Because when you asked him if there are ever days he doesn't feel like doing it, at first he said no because he thought you were asking if there's days he takes off. And then you push him on, yeah, of course there's days I don't feel like doing it. But I do it. Right. Yeah. And, but, but, but I think the key with that, though, too, because he started at five, right? Started playing the violin at seven. But he wanted to. 
he asked if he could. And I think a lot of us decide my kid's going to be a concert pianist. So we buy the piano, we make them play, and we drive them. And they're playing six days a week, but hating every minute of it. And at 16, that's the last thing they're ever going to do. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago called My Kids Are People, Not Projects. And the idea that if you can figure out what they want to do and let them do it and support them, it's going to be pretty extraordinary. So here's a kid who's amazing. I have a tough time with that one, right? Because you can't ask a kid to make that decision. A kid doesn't really know. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you can expose them to all kinds of things. Right. I think that's the key. I think you expose them to as many things as possible and see what one sticks. They're going to yeah. naturally gravitate towards something. Yeah. I remember when we were uh, on one of these adventures, and we worked out with your two sons. And your youngest son, we were wrestling, and uh, he didn't want to do some things. And so you were making him go out and run around the, the field. And he would come in and stay for about two minutes and then do something wrong again and go run. And at some point, I came over to you and said, you know, you're not punishing him. He wants to run. <laughs> the punishment is the wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to be in this room. Yeah. He wants to be out there running. Well, I mean, so, you know, you got to find what is it that the kid wants to do. But yeah. you got to expose him to it. Yeah, you got to. Sure. Sure. It's funny. The one thing that came across my mind there is like, because I'm big on exposing my kids to a lot of different things, giving them opportunity. But here's an example where a kid one of the first things he was exposed to he said, this is the one I want to do. Right. I think it's, it's interesting that the parents recognize that. Instead of saying, no, we're going to make you be well-balanced and well-rounded, they realize that there are some people who they just know, and this is his laser focus. And so, you know, they're not making him do a thousand other things. But I, I love, too, when you asked if he thinks when he looks out the window if those kids are wasting their time. He said, and I love that he didn't judge them. He said, no. I, I thought that was a really remarkable answer for, for, for a 13-year-old For a 13 yeah. to, get, to have that perspective. It, it almost sounded like a kind of a pro athlete giving the right answer yeah, yeah. To, to a question. Almost like he'd been know? coached, but he had Almost like he'd been coached, but yeah. he hadn't. I mean, he, he just intuitively knew, you know, th those kids are good, too. I'm a good kid, wh yeah. whatever. They're, not, they're just doing stuff differently. Yeah, I, I just happen to have a different yeah. interest, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so. Yeah, my, uh, my parents but, wanted me to play musical instruments. I had to play musical instruments when I was... 13 or 16 so like every three months I would change again I would play the harp the accordion the flute the cello the harp is actually cool because I just got to be like next next you know because <laughs> I love music but some of us like are musically inclined you know but uh yeah. you, you were talking about drive and what I love what he said what drives you is he says I get to play for the audience and that makes the audience happy yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's like, it's not even for him. His that's, goal that's is... That's powerful. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful thing for a 13-year-old to and, do so. And he's really, like, when he's up there, we talk about flow state, and we talked about Michele, just to say, see something, who talked about flow. And this kid, he defines flow state. Like, when he says he gets up, he's not nervous, he plays, he just feeds off their energy. Um, and some athletes, like Michael Jordan talked about in basketball, that's his flow state, right? So this kid is, he's really a great example of finding that and harnessing that. And like you say, it's not self-gratification. He's going to make a ton of money someday, but not because he wants to make money, because he's found a way to contribute. And I've noticed that a lot of these podcasts, and we'll see more and more of them, where people say, I found a way to contribute. I found a way to be valuable to other people, and those are the people who end up the most successful. No doubt about it. And the most yeah. lovely to be around. I mean, yeah. And yeah. that kid was lovely. He was a nice, yeah. really yeah, cool he, kid. Yeah, he was. He, he was just, I mean, his parents were sitting back in the corner. I mean, they were oh, very, yeah. obviously very proud of him, and they had every right to be. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was just a, he was just a good natured kid yeah. you know and the other thing happens I, to be a world-class pianist the other thing i liked about him is he did not budge you were not going to bully him into doing a spartan race <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I play a spartan race we should get live music yeah. at the, yeah, the, the, right. spartan, yeah. the, the middle of nowhere the, the barbed wire yeah, yeah, yeah. bagpipes and Cool. No, I, you know what? It, like you say, it was very different than a lot of our interviews, but I think that's a big thing that makes this podcast great. Diversity. We're not just having the same person again and again. Exactly. Diversity. Another one of your four-syllable words. Diversity. Diversity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're, yeah. we're all sitting here counting in our heads. <laughs> cool. Anyways. So there you go. So, hey, if you want to see more diversity, Count check more out syllables. all of our other Spartan podcasts, Spartan Up Podcasts at SpartanUpPodcast.com, and you'll see all kinds of interesting characters. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com.